Today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a US-based meat subscription company that's all about giving customers access to high-quality meat at an affordable price. They offer 100% grass-fed and grass-finished beef, cage-free pork, free-range organic chicken, and wild-caught seafood delivered right to your doorstep. And at less than $6 per meal, you'll save time and money. There are no shipping fees, and you can customize your box to fit your needs. If I was in the USA right now, I would 100% do this. ButcherBox seems like a no-brainer. If you want high-quality, farm fresh meat in the good old US of A. What's even better? ButcherBox supports and works with hundreds of farmers raising the bar for the way animals are treated. If you're looking for ethically sourced meat, ButcherBox is right for you. Join a community focused on caring about animals and our planet, improving livelihoods for farmers and sharing better meals together. Sign up with our special link and literally bring home the bacon. You'll receive one free pack of bacon in every box for the lifetime of your membership. Click the link in the description downstairs to change the way you eat meat today. Now, onto the show. Today, I'm gonna show you guys what I eat when I'm trying to lose weight. If I'm traveling, I'm not really eating like this, but when I'm home, this is the routine I try to stick to. First, a little bit of history. I have had a weight problem since I was, I don't know, two months old. I probably drank too much breast milk. Here's a picture of me as a kid, pretty chubby. Here's another picture, cute, but chubby. When I got into high school, I played a lot of sports. I got a lot leaner. My 20s were a struggle because that's when I learned about alcohol. Can we do like a rainbow? Alcohol. It took me a really long time to build healthy habits around food. And now I'm, I'm mostly there. But I can say probably for the rest of my life, I'm gonna have ongoing challenges with food. So if you thought I just got to travel around and eat whatever I wanted and not gain weight, you're wrong. In my late 20s, I got to my heaviest ever. I was working a crap job, not sleeping, not taking care of myself, drinking too much, and just eating to make up for the lack of sleep. And I ballooned up to about 300 pounds. I went from that to, well, what I am now. Quick disclaimer, this is what works for me, and if something else works for you, then do that. Let's jump into it. Number one, I weigh myself every day. In the morning, I wake up, I go to the bathroom, weigh myself naked, done. You should not be weighing yourself several times throughout the day. Of course, you gain weight throughout the day. Next, I said, a weekly goal of how many kilograms or pounds I want to lose that week and by which day. You really shouldn't try to lose more than 1% of your body weight per week. So if you weigh 100 kilograms, that means you could lose one kilogram per week. If you're 50 kilograms, well, you probably shouldn't be losing weight at all because you're fucking 50 kilograms. Another thing that helped me a lot was having food prepared in advance. Don't keep crappy food in your house and have healthy options available. We'll talk more about snacks later. And the biggest tip of all is finding foods that you actually like. There's no reason you need to be suffering the whole time by not only eating less than usual, but eating food you hate. The struggle for me is there's so many diets out there. First, I was doing high protein, and then I was like, oh, a little bit of keto, high fat. But then I'd be like, but I like bread too. So I'd mix the fat with the bread and with the protein. And then I was just eating all too many calories. The moment I really found success was when I started being very strict about my caloric intake. Nobody likes to hear it, but calories in, calories out is a real thing. So let's get into it. A day in the the life of Sonny when he's not traveling. My usual day when I'm not traveling, wake up at 6.30 a.m. People who wake up at 5 a.m., why? Don't tell people you wake up at 5 a.m. Say, hey, I go to sleep at 7.30 p.m. Awesome. Next, I drink a tall cup of water, and then I feed my dog. Four days a week from 7.30 to 8.30, I do weight training. After an hour of weight training, I jump on the treadmill and walk for another hour at as high of an incline as I can. Around 10 a.m., I eat my first meal of the day, and this is what it is. All right, this first meal is crazy. If you eat this after you work out, you're gonna put on pounds of muscle. No, wait, wait one minute. Boom, good enough. I'm gonna take one third of this rice. Then I got this, a chicken and beef liver pate. Oh, this is the good stuff. Get it real mixed together. Egg. Boom. That is what my dog eats for breakfast. It's, uh, it's a little joke. Is it fun? Was that fun, guys? Now let's talk about my breakfast. Throughout the day, if I'm trying to lose weight, I can eat about 2,500 calories. Here it is. I start with oatmeal, nothing fancy. A key part of tracking your calories is properly measuring your food. I use the scale. Uh, uh, uh. 150 exactly. I also put in 125 grams of blueberries, but I gotta make this taste good. I don't have a bunch of sweetener options in Vietnam. What I do have access to is this. This is kind of like a sports drink, BCAAs. So I toss that in there. That has no calories, just chemicals. Oh, but chemicals are so bad for you. Yeah, I don't know. You know what's so bad for you? Being morbidly obese. Think about that. From here, I put in hot water and I throw it in the microwave. <laughs> 
pop that in the microwave for two minutes. In the meantime, my eggs. My big concern with eggs is cooking it in a way where I'm not adding a bunch of fat to it. So if you put oil or butter, you can easily add 100 to 200 extra calories. So I cook it in the microwave. So I crack five eggs. I want some white parts and some yolky parts, so I don't give it a crazy amount of the mix. And then I give it a little bit of salt, and that's ready to hit the microwave. Oatmeal, done. Oh, eggs going in. I just do it one minute at a time. Okay. Now it's only been a minute, but I found the texture is actually better if you mix it around every minute. Put that back in. Meanwhile, the oatmeal is ready, and that's looking delicious. Love it. Ice coming out again. Give it another little bit of a mix. There's some cooked parts, some liquidy parts. So I want that all together. When we were in Toulé, Toulou, I was like, hey, please don't cook my eggs with oil. He goes, I got you. When I came back, he used butter. <laughs> like, all right, eggs complete. Take a look. This is why I don't over stir them. I like those kind of white parts and yellow parts. And honestly, look, this is not gourmet cooking. This is real ass life cooking. You need something quick. You don't want to put oil in it. This is a perfect solution right here. So this is my breakfast. Altogether, it's about a thousand calories. For me, this is perfect. A few months ago, I started following a YouTuber who goes by the name of Greg Doucette. And I learned a lot from this guy. First is that weight training isn't burning as many calories as you might think. Doing cardio is going to burn a lot more calories. Doing something as simple as just walking on a treadmill with a steep incline for 30 minutes, it gets your heart rate up, it burns calories. You guys might not have a treadmill, but there's always something you can do. You can go outside and walk. You can find hills, you can find stairs. My biggest takeaway from Coach Greg regarded the way I was eating. Coach Greg focuses all on calories in and calories out, but the best way to do this is to eat foods that have low calorie density. This way, you can be satiated, you can eat a lot of food, but you're still at a calorie deficit at the end of the day. For example, instead of eating chips, eat popcorn. Instead of candy, eat fruit. Instead of granola, eat oatmeal. Instead of a fatty steak, eat deli chicken. When I made the switch to actually measuring my calories and eating fewer calories, that's when I really started to notice measurable differences. Next up, here is what I eat for lunch. Maybe uh, two, three hours after breakfast, I'm already eating lunch. This is a giant salad and this is grilled chicken. I put the grilled chicken on the salad. A couple of things. First, you still need to measure the calories coming from your vegetables. Second, what you put on the salad is really important because a lot of people will put very fatty dressings, ranch and so on on their salad and they'll add another 200, 300, 400 calories. Don't do that. If you live in the USA, you have an insane amount of options for low calorie dressings that still taste pretty dang good. Vietnam, we don't have any options. So this is what I usually use. This is salsa. It's not very chunky, it's pretty liquidy, tomatoey. It's got some spice to it. This whole thing is about 50 calories. I use maybe half of this for a whole salad. I don't want to ruin it because I want to eat this later. Can you do the CGI, Lynn? <laughs> The point is, salsa is a great option. It's very low calorie, it still has a lot of flavor. It makes it kind of liquidy. Nobody wants their salad to be dry, like hard to choke down. You need some salad lubrication, and that's what this is. For this whole lunch, it's about 500 calories. At the end of eating this, even though it's not like my number one choice of foods I would like to eat, I am gonna feel pretty satiated and pretty full. Next, let's talk about snacks. Ideally, your main meals are filling you up, but it doesn't hurt to have some healthy or low calorie snacks like these. You need to have good, healthy snacks to save you because you're gonna have weak moments between meals where you're like, I can't do it, man. Here are some of my favorites. Fruit has a ridiculously small amount of calories. Strawberries, blueberries, melons, mushrooms. Some people love mushrooms, some people hate mushrooms. I get to see raw mushrooms and I enjoy it. Steamed sweet potatoes. These have about as many calories as they do grams. So about 100 grams is about 100 calories. Pickles have almost no calories. Green olives, very few calories. Rice cakes are nice. Three of these packages is about 100 calories. Kimchi is great. It's healthy and it has very, very few calories. Mushrooms in a can. Look, I grew up eating canned foods because I grew up in a trailer house, so I got used to it. There's a lot of snacks you gotta be careful about. They get branded as healthy, but they're very high calorie. Granola, peanut butter, trail mix, crackers. You gotta be careful. Next, dinner time. Here's what I eat around 6.30 p.m. This is what I eat because it takes almost no time, it takes no thought, and it still tastes good and is satisfying to me. So I love sandwiches and I love wraps, but I found that the wraps were just too many calories and I couldn't eat as much food. So I just started wrapping food in lettuce. Let's say two lettuces, two turkeys. This is such a white guy thing to eat. Next, the mayonnaise. It sounds constipated. You can do it. Oh yeah. This is 11 calories per tablespoon. So for mayonnaise, that's real good. From here, I roll it up just like that and I freaking eat it. 
Oh, okay. I can eat about two, three, four hundred grams of the turkey, getting pretty close to a pound of turkey because it just has way fewer calories than ham or roast beef or steak. Something like this will end up being about 500, 600 calories. At 7 p.m., I do cardio again. A lot of people who are cutting or trying to lose weight, they might do cardio for one hour. For me, I would rather just break that into two pieces. So I do one in the morning and one in the evening. And listen, even for me, it's really not easy. I'm talking to you today about tips and tactics, but it's a lot more important to have a good reason why you want to do this. And that's going to carry you through the difficulty and the pain. We can talk about that another time though. Next, I want to show you the best, most healthy ice cream you've ever seen. First, you do need an, a crazy, insane, super strong blender. You can put in any kind of fruit you want. I'm going to put in mango. I found that that's my favorite. I also happen to have this mango flavored BCAA powder. So that is going to be our sweetener. This is vanilla protein. Give it one scoop of that. Next, the ingredient you've never even heard of. It's called sodium carbozymethyl cellulose, also known as xanthan gum. It's really going to thicken up what we're making in here. I try to just put five grams. Let's see. This part's important. The scale sucks. I don't trust my scale. I'm going to go with four today. Then, in with the xanthan, 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 with the powder. Put the powder in there. Give me a little bit of water. From this part, you just got to feel it in your heart and a little bit in your balls. If you put too much water, it's going to be too liquidy. At the end of the day, we want this to be so thick, we can put it upside down over our heads. Shout out to Coach Greg. Put a bunch of ice in there. Tam, tam. Try it again. Oh, it's so thick. Boom. I'll consider that done. From here, dump the ice. Come back. That is super thick. It's so thick you can put it over your head. Oh God, thank God. You got to get some kind of a spatula or something and squeeze it out. And take a look at that. Let's give it a taste. It's perfect. And here's the best part. You see all this food right here, guys? Now, if that was ice cream, this would be well over a thousand calories. All this, 290 calories. I want to have some of my team try this and they can tell you what they think. Take a little bit of a spoonful, be honest. What kind of micro bite is that? That's good. That's really good, huh? It's so good. It's good. All that, 290 calories. A little bit of it. I like it. I'll take it too. Okay, you can. This is actually mine. Oh. Okay. Do you actually like it? I actually like it. All right, so that's it. That's my workout routine and some of the main foods I eat when I'm trying to lose weight. What I recommend for you guys is to move more. There's no perfect exercise. Whatever you like, whatever gets your heart rate up, that's what you should do. Regarding food, if you're having trouble losing weight, I would say take a look at your calorie intake. There might be a couple foods or types of meals that continuously sabotage you. I hope this was remotely helpful for at least 1% of you. And the rest of you, at least try making that ice cream. It's damn good. Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer. Be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. I'm gonna go do more cardio. Ugh, my hips! All right. Click the link in the description below to get started on your premium meat subscription with ButcherBox.